Hello people, in this video let us look at the treatment of fracture. See, treatment of fracture there are three phases, uh, emergency care, definitive care and rehabilitation. Emergency what you should do, as soon as there is a fracture you will rest that part by splinting it. Okay, so you will splint using anything that you have like this uh, wooden plank etc, bamboo etc. Then ice therapy so that uh, you can uh, prevent the swelling, right. Then compression is again to reduce the swelling. Everything here is talking about swelling, swelling, swelling only. Elevation also to reduce the swelling so that there will be no fluid accumulation. So you will elevate it so that there will be no fluid accumulation. So reduce the swelling, reduce the swelling, reduce the swelling. Okay. Rise. What is rise? Rest, ice, compression, elevation. Okay. For resting etc. you will use lot of splints. So all the splints they have shown here. Newspaper, folded newspaper, bamboo, umbrella also they have used. See, if it is emergency department or whatever, you should always take care of airway breathing circulation, right? Hemorrhage, airway breathing circulation, you should take care of. Hemorrhage first, then airway breathing circulation. That is your part of your basic life support, isn't it? Basic life support, they have told here. In emergency care itself, if you have analgesics, you can give them intramuscular. If there is head injury, etc., you should uh, stop. You should not give narcotic analgesics like morphine and all you should not give, right? And uh, you can give them a broad spectrum antibiotic. Right, and uh, you can give them um, what else? You will send them for radiological investigation. Something uh, I forgot. Analgesic. What else? This is emergency, isn't it? Where you have drugs. Now coming to definitive care. See emergency care over. Now definitive care. That means you have got the X-ray. Let us see. Okay. What will you do? They are talking about reduction, okay, so you have to bring the bones close together, right, reduction you should do and then you will have to reduction, immobilization, preservation of functions, that's what they are telling here. See reduction can be open reduction or closed reduction, right, open means uh, you will have to open up to surgically and reduce the uh, fracture. Closed means you just take and you will just twist and you will uh, make it uh, reduced, right. See, reduction of fracture, how and all you can do? Closed manipulation. Okay, closed means under general anesthesia you can do, um, it may be required. And you will realign the displaced bone. Then you will give continuous traction. <coughs> right? So, you will pull on both sides kind of a thing. Right? Continuous traction. And you can bring the bones in proper alignment. Open reduction, when will you do? When you cannot do closed reduction, when uh, closed reduction won't help, that time you will do open reduction. That means you will do surgically, open up, cut the skin, open, go there and reduce. Okay, then anyways there again they are talking, talking about, once you are in there you can also do an internal fixation. Plates, screws and all that, right? When will you do open reduction? When you cannot do closed reduction or it is failed closed reduction or there are some displaced intra-articular fractures, that is some joint fractures they are telling. There is a displaced epiphyseal injury or if there is major avulsion fracture, fracture of patella, if there is non-union that means uh, the fracture is already old and it has not united then you will have to open it up and redu reduce it. Okay. So basically you remember non-union okay and major fracture, major avulsion fracture you can say uh, like of the patella. Then if there is epiphyseal injury, anything that is displaced you know but a little complicated displacer like a joint or an epiphyseal injury all that okay. So, or when closed reduction does not work. So, just remember the absolute ones at least. People, um, now let us move to the um, fixation. How will you fix internal fixation? We told you, right? How will you do that internal fixation? You can use some steel wire, K wire, Krishna's wire, intramedullary nail. All these are a way, a way of fixing, okay? You can use screws, plate and screws, implants. The implants means what? Screws only, right? Then a combination of all these you can use. Look at this image here. It's showing you inside. Inside they have put some uh, plates and screws. So this is an internal fixation. Now where is external fixation? Some amount is still internal only. But anyways, this is external fixation. Okay. Look at this one. Here to the bone. This one guys. Um, are you able to see? This one. Next to the bone they have put a plate <clears throat> and there are screws. This is also internal fixation only. It's inside your body, right? But look at this one. This is inside of inside actually. It is inside the bone actually this thing. 
So that's an intramedullary nail which is inside the bone, actually inside the bone also. That's an intramedullary nail, okay. So that is also internal fixation only. Now we have reached the end. Actually guys, we uh, in this definitive care itself, all this the brace, cast, sling, all this will come here only, okay. So brace it, cast it, etc. Now let us move to the third one. Phase 1 is emergency care over, phase 2 is definitive care, all that cast, sling, fixation, reduction, all that over. Phase 3 is rehabilitation, rehabilitation. It happens from the time of the fracture itself. You should think about rehabilitation and help the person rehabilitate and um, yeah. So rehabilitation begins at the time of injury. Only three things they are talking about here. Joint mobilization, muscle re-education right etc so joint mobilization means the mo uh, a joint which is adjacent to the injured bone uh, it can become stiff because if you don't use much right it might become stiff but this if they cast it anyways i think they cannot use it right but uh, if it is available for use then uh, if you are not using it can become stiff so they are telling you to uh, gentle massage manipulation hot fermentation etc to make the joint mobile Kindly note, this is all if they have told you to mobilize. If they have told you don't mobilize, then don't mobilize it. Because sometimes casts are applied so that you don't mobilize it, right? Then coming to muscle re-education. See, if you don't use your muscles, they'll get wasted. So, you should always, uh, whatever muscles are available for use and are, are, they are allowing you to use, those muscles you have to use and train them, okay? See here, very clearly they are saying the joints which are out of the plaster and the muscles etc. which are out of the plaster only, you should try to move and all that. And once you have removed this immobilization, this cast etc., splint etc., then you have, can try all this hot fermentation, active um, and uh, active assisted joint mobilizing exercises etc. You thought everything is over? No guys, there is so much, so much more, okay. All this whatever they told, very generically they told, they think, they are thinking that it's closed fracture. Okay, but if it is open fracture, they told it is closed fracture, everything was fine. But if it is open fracture, that means there is a wound and all that, then you will have to do wound care, tetanus profile access you will have to give, you will have to give analgesic, antibiotics and all you will have to give. You will have to prevent infection basically. Look at this. Fracture, undisplaced and displaced. Undisplaced. Undisplaced means what you have to do, you just immobilize, it will only get fixed by itself and you can assist, give some physiotherapy to that person. Guys, focus, we are just looking at some flow chart which is trying to explain the whole thing. Let's take a better color. Okay, fracture is there. If it is undisplaced, you just immobilize, it will heal by itself, then you give physiotherapy. If it is displaced, then you have to reduce it. You can do closed reduction or open reduction. Closed reduction. You will bring it to an acceptable position, that is it, you, you have reduced it, then you will immobilize and then physiotherapy. If it is not in an acceptable position after closed reduction, you will do open reduction and then phys internal fixation and then physiotherapy. Now, coming to the last one here, if it is open reduction and internal fixation you have to do, you will do and then you will give physiotherapy, nothing special here actually. Did you understand guys? Same thing only they are saying. If it is um, uh, undisplaced or displaced, if you can close, reduce it, if you can open, reduce it. But if it is an open wound, open fracture, then how we will take care? If it is open fracture, that means there is a wound, right? You will have to do wound care, wound debridement, tetanus, antibiotics like uh, third generation cephalosporins, all this you will have to give analgesics, etc. So if it is a small wound, if it is a clean wound, if it is a doubtful lacerated wound, if it is an infected wound, you have to take care of the wound also, the quality of the wound you should be able to say right so remember guys fracture first thing they are talking about is splinting okay splinting the fracture has to be splinted as soon as possible is the first thing that they have told in uh, fracture general principles of fracture management so do not forget guys rise and uh, reduction internal fixation cast brace splint etc okay bye bye